Hello everyone. This is the remaining part of the last video which was the structure of nephron part 2. In this uh, I would be explaining the uh, process of osmoregulation regulation in DCT. I have explained you that ultrafiltration occurs in Malvigian capsule. In PCT there is reabsorption, loop of hand reabsorption and in DCT the next step would be osmoregulation. regulation. First of all what is osmoregulation? The regulation of water content in the body is known as osmo regulation. Osmo means water, regulation means regulation. Now the part of nephron which is responsible for uh, osmo regulation is DCT, distal convoluted tubule. How does it do that? Now there are two conditions. One is that the body is having maximum or excess of water. One is that body is dehydrating, does not have water. Under both the conditions, body will send a signal to pituitary gland in the head to secrete, which is an endocrine gland to secrete a hormone ADH, anti-diuretic hormone, also known as a vasopressin. This hormone when it is secreted in the body, it makes the walls of DCT very permeable for water. Now two conditions, one that body is having more water, urine is having less. So whatever more water is there in the body will be reabsorbed into the DCT through this by the process of diffusion. And second condition, body is dehydrating. Then what will happen? Whatever urine is there in the, uh, water is there in the urine, that will be reabsorbed back into the blood to retain it in the body. By this process, the uh, in DCT, the water level of the body is maintained. Process is known as osmo regulation. Very important reasoning question comes in the exams many times. After this, now, here in DCT, we will call this filtrate urine. Now it is full-fledged urine and will finally be passed into collecting ducts. From this collecting ducts will be passed into the pelvis part of kidney. Through pelvis moves to ureter and finally to urinary bladder for the passage out from the body. Now what will happen to the blood? This blood which was here in vasa recta, moving through vasa recta, this vasa recta will finally join the renal vein. It will join renal vein and this renal vein will now carry the blood into the body which will be passed to all the parts of the body. Now, this finishes up the structure of nephron. Now, a very important part which is related to it is the structure of Malpighian capsule also. One question is related to the structure of nephron and the other structural question, very very important question which has come in many board exams of ICIC 10th is the structure of Malpighian capsule. Now when we see the structure, this is the same structure which I have drawn but this is a larger view of the structure. This is the structure that undergoes the process of ultrafiltration that starts the formation of urine that is urine formation now this whole structure is known as malpighian capsule malpighian capsule if comes it is divided into two parts that is one is baumann's capsule and the tubular network present in it known as glomerulus. This tube known as efferent arteriole and this tube known as efferent arteriole. We have already done that the process of ultrafiltration occurs here in Malpighian capsule. The blood is passed to efferent arterioles through renal artery. This blood it comes into the glomerulus. It is filtered out from the glomerulus and is filtered to such an extent that all the useful and harmful substances it gets filtered in Bowman's capsule. A thick blood it remains in glomerulus which finally moves to efferent arteriole and is passed to vasa recta, passes through the uh, parallelly to the nephron. This we have already done in the last video. Now this filtrate will settle down or will come here in Bowman's capsule and will be passed into the next part PCT from here 
This whole structure known as Malpighian capsule process which occurs here is ultrafiltration. One reasoning question related to this is that why efferent arteriole is thick or is wide as compared to efferent arteriole. Efferent arteriole is wider as compared to efferent arteriole to generate a very high pressure to put a maintain a condition of very high pressure in glomerulus so that under that pressure this blood it filters out because the process of ultra filtration what is it the filtration of blood under very high pressure how is this pressure maintained this tube from which entry is there it is wide but from which exit is there it is narrow it will maintain a very high large pressure in glomerulus which will undergo the process of ultra filtration now this completes the topic uh, structure of nephron while we have done the structure of malpighian capsule also here and the process of ultra filtration in detail in the next video i will be taking up some important topics which are related to excretory system some miscellaneous topics which will include the composition of urine some abnormal conditions uh, in the urine and dialysis etc please do watch thank you Mama.